you. Welcome to Otaku Saga. I'm Zero. I'm DK. And I'm Rizzo. And, and this, this is, is Otaku, Otaku Saga, Saga Talks. Talks. Where we talk. Yeah. About our first impressions of fall 2016. The, the anime, not the season. Not, yeah, like not not the physical season. Not yeah, I'm about to say the season. Not nearly enough rain and fog for my liking. Yeah, for the, like, for the Bay Area, yeah, very much so. Uh, come on, Mother Nature, step it up, will you? You know, three out of ten. Anyway, <laughs> so <laughs> starting right off, uh, yeah, we're just gonna get straight to it. Like, yeah, this is our this is our first impression podcast. This I think might be the first time. This is the done. first first impressions podcast. So yeah. we watched all the anime that we're watching up to episode three, at least. Yep. Episode four is on some of them. And so, yeah, we just kind of want to go through, do first impressions. We did have an announcement on one of them. Actually, uh, technically we had an announcement on two of them. One of them was copyright related. The other one is shit related. Mm. <laughs> Um, anyway, so let's go ahead and roll right into it. We're all just right. going all alphabetical right here. All alphabetical, straight down the line. We give an opinion and uh, a score if you want. Uh, thumbs up, thumbs down. Basically, you're going to hear our th individual thoughts on yep. the matter. Yep. So uh, starting off, we have Sangatsu no Lion, and that is first because it's Son is three, and it is like literally the Arabic number three. So, never mind the details. Yeah. Anyway, Sangatsu no Lion. Interestingly enough, we weren't going to do this in the beginning. Yeah, that's true. The first episode really, really impressed me personally. Myself as well. And uh, so both of us kind of recommended that it be uh, promoted to the anime reaction lineup. Yep. It, it, it really, really makes Shogi intense. It really does. Like... <laughs> I now want to learn how to play Shogi. I really want to learn how to play Shogi like more than I already wanted to ever since I first heard about it. Yeah, I, I've always had a, a passing a passing curiosity about it, hmm. but this really makes me want to get into it. Very much so. Uh, but yeah, the story so far is really starting to draw me in. Uh, especially given everybody's fucked up backstory, apparently. Everybody. Yeah. Even the damn opponents. Right. So. But, um. So for me, it's definitely a thumbs up. Okay. Yeah. Zero, what about you? Uh, me, it's a twinge bit slow for my liking. Just, just a tiny bit, but I'm I'm an action-oriented guy. Oh, so so that, that just comes down to personal taste. Yeah, personal taste. Okay. Well, uh, it's pretty world. Right. Art style is amazing. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, char the characters. I, mean, God, I just love the characters. They're so deep. Mm. Uh, even, the, even the bad opponents. Like, uh, what, what was his name? The, the chubby guy? Oh, uh, yeah. Nikaido? Even him. It, it's a deep character. I mean, it, it was, I don't know how much you're going to actually see of him, but it was a pretty deep character. Uh, so, yeah, it's, a, it's quite above average for me, at least up until this point. Uh, and, yeah, thumbs up. Okay. Enjoying it. Yeah. Um, when I got finished with episode one, and actually uh, in subsequent episodes, in, my, in the back of my mind, I've been equating Sangatsu no Lion as, and this is going to strange, sound strange coming from me, but a poor man Shigatsu wa Kimi no Uso. Give Ray blue eyes, he's practically Kosei. I mean, he has a very tragic backstory, a child prodigy at a certain uh, classically you know, nerdy subject like Shogi, uh, whereas Kosei was a piano genius. But I got the feeling it's going to... Uh, kind of... Pianist. Pianist. Genius. It Pianist. sounds dirtier. Ah, good man. Um, anyway, uh, I have a feeling it might go a similar route with this, uh, whereas with Ray's interaction uh, with the other characters, and then this really, as you said, Zero, very deeply, you know, very deep cast of characters, uh, very much individually flawed, individually relatable, uh, I think Ray's going to come into his own element and uh, kind of 
sort of reinforce his style of playing the game uh, in front of our eyes. Um, art style is definitely uh, unique, um, but I found out actually before this take uh, started that the manga has over, what, 150 chapters or so? So it's, it's been running for a while, which could explain some things about the art style, if it's an older work. Probably hasn't changed all that much since... Oh, no, I mean, you gotta, yeah, you gotta be Yeah, faithful. the first thing that really leaps out to me is the art style. Yeah. Because it is, like, so much different than you, than you from expect Shaft. from anime nowadays. Especially from Shaft. It's yeah. like, you look around our set, and you look at the posters in the background, and they all look... They, they have differences. All the characters look different. But the but lines, for the most part, look kind of clean. Really, really, uh, really similar. Really similar faces and stuff like that. Then you get some unique ones like, say, Soul Eater and uh, Sangatsu no Lion, I think, has one of those unique art styles. Very distinctive. Yeah. Um, well, You're definitely not going to mistake it for anything else. No, yeah. no, especially how they draw the mouse. It kind of look like kabuki masks. <laughs> yeah. That's the best I can come up. But uh, yeah, if this uh, description doesn't do it for you, definite thumbs up. Check it out. Really oh, yeah. recommended. A uh, uh, little, little side note. Mm -hmm. um, I'm actually enjoying the fact that this is one of the few anime that we're watching this season that has no fan service. Or it has extremely little little of it. Is it, yeah, it the it's only a very, fan like, service that you're gonna get is maybe with the older two of the sisters? With well, Akari, probably. Well, definitely with Akari. I think with um, uh, Hina. A Hinata, yeah. Yeah, I think with Hina, you're gonna get more of the kind of shipping, I guess. Okay, since her and Ray are about the same age. Well. Yeah, yeah, roughly the same age, but. So that's pretty much all you're going to get as far as that goes. Yeah. And this is a it, very... It's definitely one of those anime that you can recommend to to other people. You can recommend this anime probably to your parents. To your parents, to your little kid sibling. I mean, this is a, this is a very, very straight-laced anime. Very wholesome. Uh, yeah, I think just about anyone in the whole family can enjoy it. More or less. Well, maybe not like the, little, uh, the younger kids, but... I, yeah, PG. PG. It's very PG. PG-13. I'm not even sure it is 13. Uh, there is a depiction of alcohol consumption. True. So it would be PG-13. And the whole, um, you know, what happened to his parents. Depiction of death. Depiction. PG-13. 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 Yeah, there you go. Very nice. Uh, your average American family can enjoy this and uh, not send nasty letters to the shaft or us for recommending it. And now we move on to oh, something completely different. <laughs> Blood of Wars! Oh, man. So when we started off, I was really excited for Blood of Wars because I love vampires and mythologies and stuff like that. Right? Especially uh, doubly so if it's in a modern setting. I love Blade. You get none of that here. I get none of that here. <laughs> you get none of that here. <laughs> Absolutely none. <sighs> Uh, what we get instead is a very, very like roller coaster like ride of a story. We don't know where the hell it's going either. Yeah, it, it's actually rather annoying. Yeah. It is annoying because, as you said, love the whole concept behind it. You know, yeah. you got vampires in a modern setting, you know, uh, kind of railing against the man. It, it's just, yeah, it reminded me of Blade from the outside. dollar setup? Two dollar finish. There's animation errors galore. Up There's the direction mistakes galore. Hashtag assault rifle shotgun. Hashtag misplaced fan service. Mm. There's some problems with this one. Now, we've watched up to episode three, and actually we want to put out a call out to you guys. Do you guys want to see more reactions to this? And because, let us to be completely honest, this series so far is trash. Like, it, it's it's so far below average for for us. Um, Hitori no Shida did a better job, and we stopped watching that at episode six. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I mean that that's how that's how like degrading this is. Um, yeah. But we do need an individual verdict. Yep. So Rizzo, if you would please. Um, given the the animation errors that I can't look past, the direction errors that I can't look past. The fact that the main character is an unlikable little shit. Now granted he has a really bad past, but it still doesn't excuse him for being unlikable. A manipulative douchebag. The only thing that I can say is the thumbs down for me. 
honestly, like, I honestly don't want to watch any more of it. Okay. Zero? And I am actually on on the same bubble. Um, the, the story, I just don't know where it's going. And for me, that's not easy to do. Mm. Like... On, on almost anything we're watching. Oh yeah, this is gonna happen. Yeah, I could see this going on and stuff like that. You, we rarely get surprised, and this one's just like, what the hell was these? Were these guys thinking these these side rolls? This just don't make sense. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you you start off with a bank robbery, like well, that was that was weird. I can. Well, I I could see it starting off with a bank robbery, but then it rolls into you know they're getting framed for murder and then it rolls into they're getting taken to i what i originally thought was a penal colony mm. and then it turns into like a death game sort of thing i think and then it turns into an experiment to find the the was the hema hema mancers i think <sighs> And then it turns into, oh, they're actually in the abandoned city that the main character used to live in when he was a kid. Yeah. And that's just in the first three episodes. <laughs> so, zero, uh, thumbs up, thumbs down, yay, nay, what you say, you? Nay. About here. Nay, nay. I can't like, on the, on the way down. I can't say here because I, I want to have hope for it, but mm, it's, it's about almost there. Like 75%? Yeah. All right. And, like... If you guys want us to continue watching this, I also want to throw this out there. How do you want us to watch this? Because I would love to actually just, like what we did with Andrew Burge. The second episode <laughs> of Andrew Burge. The second episode of Andrew Burge. I would just love rail on it. to just rail on it. I thought we were pretty much doing that already. Oh no, I'm holding back. <laughs> Where are we back? <laughs> oh. Yeah. Oh man. Just like, I you. could get way worse. I could take all the filters off. Okay, okay. So. Do you guys want us to, if you guys do want us to react to this and continue watching it, do you want us to continue watching it as we have been with a more of a critical standpoint? Or do you want us to watch it as a venting? As a massive peanut gallery just waiting to pounce on this. Yeah. Mm. Let us know, please. Yeah. Andy K. Well, much in the way that communist China has yet to give us a decent car, has yet to give us a lot of decent products, uh, a explode. lot of things. They have yet to give us quality animation. And unfortunately, Blood of Wars is a step backwards from Hitori no Shida. Guilty, the sentence is death. <laughs> death to the heretic! Well, it is Chinese after all. You have to go to the death penalty by default. <laughs> Death by Firing Squad. <sighs> Yay! Geopolitical jokes. Anyway, uh, the next one that we have up is the second half of Bingo Stray Dogs. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so, mm. actually, this is kind of mixed for me. Yeah. I'm going to mm. be completely honest. Um, <laughs> no, I know we, we haven't actually released a lot of our reactions for that. We are caught up on it, but... They're coming. Be patient. So what what jumps out at me so far with the first four episodes of the second second half? Four. Four episodes that go into Dazai's backstory. Uh, that's one quarter of a 12 episode season. Yeah, that's that's basically one quarter of, of what's left in the series so far. Or what's le you know what's left in the second half of the series was spent on Dazai's backstory. And it honestly got a little bit wearing on me after I realized that it was going to go into a third one. And like, you, you gotta you gotta think about the timing here. Episode four. I mean, we should be we should be getting introduced to uh, deeper concepts. You know, where where is the main plot going? You know, stuff like that. Right, that actually and, applies to the present day plot. Yeah, right. I, and I understand, like, that, that stuff that episode four in the original season was supposed to, but in this season, we're dealing with a totally new set of circumstances in, in the present time. And all those circumstances have been shoved to the back 
for something that should have been fit into an OVA. Yeah, the, the, I think that is definitely the more fundamental issue here. We have a great three-way power struggle, which they're going to get back to in the coming episode. But, you know, the power struggle between the Port Mafia, the Armed Detective Agency, and the Guild. And we got an awesome, awesome bit of action with, um, well, yeah, with uh, Lucy Montgomery and her pocket dimension. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, so she uh, escaping from it. I, I don't know. I almost forgot about that. All right. It's been so long. Yeah, and that's just, just rather abruptly gets shoved into the side for something that, yeah, it, it, it should have been an OVA. That could have been explained it's, in like one OVA between I, seasons. I, yeah, I do want to point it out. It is not unenjoyable. Like, I do really enjoy the way that. It's amazing. It, like, if it was done in a separate OVA, or if it was squeezed more into two episodes instead of taking a full four episodes to do, I mean, it was a really, really nice story, well animated. Um, honestly, even the pacing of it was fine. It just. Just this, not in the main series. Yeah, just this whole chunk of story is just badly placed. Yeah, I, and honestly, there, there's other things that they could have expanded on just a little bit more. Like, I could mm. see that backstory going another couple episodes. But, again, it just doesn't fit in the main, the main story that we're going through. I mean, at, the fight with Oda just... Between oh. Oda and uh, Gide. Oh my God! And just just the way that all that all that all that unfolded, you know, everything that's happened with Oda, just amazing. So I mean, when when we say that when we start giving it, giving it some flack here, don't get us wrong. We absolutely loved it, but we do have to take into consideration what we thought about its place in the overreaching plot. Yep. Because it was included in the main season, in the main series, and not as an OVA or a movie. Can you imagine all that with movie quality budgets and all that? <laughs> Damn! Especially that last fight scene. Oh man. But uh, yeah, so for me, overall, I'm gonna have to give the second half of Bungo Stray Dogs a... Eh. Eh. It's, it's definitely on the upswing, because it is still a good story, and it's well animated and everything. Like, like, to be honest, if I was judging it as an OVA, it would get a straight thumbs up, but just where it was and, and what it's done to the main story just puts it in like this area for me. Mm. Yep, and I gotta, I gotta say the same, the same thing, just part way up there. If it was a full OVA, it would be fantastic and I would have, I would have endorsed the hell out of it. Yeah, I just want I just want to get back to you know our, our original cast here. I want to get back to add sushi and you know Rompo. The rest of the agency. I, I want to get back to the agency because mm -hmm. I think I still think that like where we left off, Lucy was supposed to be taken hostage or captured or something. Taken into know? the agency, maybe converted even. Yeah. I'm gonna have to agree with your uh, with your guys' verdict. It's a big time meh for me uh, because once again of the placement of Dazai's backstory, and also due to the fact that we have so many characters. Our character reference sheet for Bundo Stray Dogs is two pages long, and we have so many characters that we've yet to be really introduced to, both in the guild, and we still haven't really gone into a lot of depth on the members of the Armed Detective Agency. I mean, before the first season ended, what we had the focus episode on uh, on Kenji Miyazawa, on uh, Akiko Yasano, the nurse, and it's pretty much about it. Maybe a little bit on Kunikita. I would have liked a little bit more out of that. And then obviously with the guild, I mean, some of the figures we see listed here: H.P. Lovecraft, John Steinbeck, Mark Twain. I want to see what their powers are, and then enjoy that little oh reference to their literature. And you only now we only get eight episodes to do that in, and it, that's just I'm, kind of disappointing. There is a I'm anticipating a really rushed production to finish this off. And if it does get rushed, it, it, this anime up to this point, One of my without fate. without this the, this four episode OVA thing, up to this point, this was a fantastic anime. One of my favorites, personally. 
eights, nine out of 10, fantastic. I mean, it was solid. I mean, recommended all over the place. If it gets a rushed ending and we're just blown through all this content, all these characters and stuff like that, yeah, I can't endorse it. Yeah, I wouldn't be able. To, I wouldn't be able to, you know, tell somebody, yeah, you should really finish this, because then I'd have to say, uh, by the way, it's kind of kind of rushed on the second. Yeah, you should. <laughs> yeah, you should watch like up to this point. Oh, you never uh, want to say that about a series. It would be like the scene during Dazai's backstory with Otosaku talking with the writer. The last yeah. chapter is horrible. The last book is horrible. Oh my god, <laughs> it's perfect. Oh, and also, I need more Kyoka. Damn it! Agreed. We want more of we want more of our cuteness. Moving on, we got Drifters. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. No, <laughs> <laughs> forget about it. <laughs> From the creator of Helsing. Oh my god, Kota Hirano so is back good. with a fucking vengeance with Drifters. It is absolutely amazing. Well, first of all, I, I, th I, can, I think I can speak for all of us that we love alternative history, kind of thinking about what ifs. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Well, that's like, you're our big time theory crafting guy. I love it. Rizzo and I love studying history. Yep. Oh, and here we go, a bunch of gruesome, gruesome melee combat from Kota Hirano. Sold! Just, yeah, sold. If you haven't watched it, what the fuck's wrong with you? Yeah. Honestly, check it out. I mean, the the animation is jarring. If you're not used to his work, it is jarring. It is technically... Oh, I, when, I, when we were talking about Sangat to No Lion, I mentioned unique art styles. Kota Hirano is one of those artists with a very distinctive art style. It is jarring. It is rough. The eyes make everyone look fucking crazy as hell. You know? Yeah, but for this series, it works. <laughs> oh, yeah, especially when, you know, uh, you get Tomohisa beating a guy's skull in with his scabbard. <laughs> or, when you, you know, got John of Arkham. Oh, burn everybody. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, well, like yeah, with uh, with Toya, he's so basically any time he's like, you can go, but leave your head, <laughs> and it just shows his face. It's like, oh, <laughs> fucking awesome! Don't piss him off. Or then you know the classic shot with the just one glowing eye. Oh yeah, yeah. Before they all go and just wreck fools like in wholesale numbers. But awesome. yeah, then you get the the really kind of weird like chibi portions. And to be honest, it really kind of reminds me of Bunga Stray Dogs. Oh, okay. Like where you have like serious sections where everybody's like like really well detailed, and then just suddenly, boom, chibi. Or uh, another another thing that does that, uh, Shogageki no Soma. Yeah. Uh, ah, okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah, you have those interactions between with uh, Alice, where all of oh. a sudden that the the eyes go big and. Yeah, like, you get the kind of almond or um, egg shaped eyes and that little oh that adorable patty face of hers. And, and then you just Alice. get snark. Uh, That's all you get. You just get snark between Alice and Soma. Or like yeah, yeah or yeah, Soma's like hey, <laughs> yeah, that little shitty grin of his. I have no idea what I'm doing, but hey, yeah, it, it's fantastic. And like when those moments come up, you just know it's comedy right now. And then as soon as it shifts back, you're like, okay, now we're back to the seriousness. Yeah, and I'm wondering who's gonna get their head blown off next, or chopped off, chopped or off, or you know, get burned alive or frozen alive. In. Or just, oh, it's awesome. Historical fi figures, uh, a, lo a lot of real life historical figures with superpowers. And who wants to see a zero fighter pilot go against a fleet of dragons? Fuck yeah. And win, epically. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> like we, we just let it off with it, with this because it's what, what it gets from us. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Unanimous. Yeah. Well, like my, this is this is one I would keep watching no matter how popular it is on our channel. Yeah, it is just that awesome. Yeah. So. <laughs> oh, finally one with mixed reactions. <laughs> <laughs> Flip flappers. <laughs> oh wait, hang on, hang on, I got that wrong. Flip flappers. <laughs> there are two kinds of people in this world. <laughs> the same and the not so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, never mind. Never mind. There are three. And then there are people who uh, kind of laugh at the other at two's <laughs> interactions with each other. I'm just eating my imaginary popcorn. Go for it. <laughs> so this series is very surreal. 
I've never taken acid before, but I imagine it's something like this. Maybe maybe acid and shrooms at the same time. I don't know. It's makes a little bit of speed in there. Yeah. LSD, I'm not sure. Like they're on a cocktail of drugs in this show. That's the only thing that I could explain it as. I mean, we go from from like something that kind of reminds us of like a Miyazaki world. Mm -hmm. And then you go to some weird ass world where it's like a kind of like machiney, but the girls turn into bunny girls and they're being helped out by a sexy version of the main character's pet rabbit. Who almost died green in an unfortunate dye factory accident. And also horribly disfigured in the real world, apparently, because it's like a blob. Well, you fall into a vat of hot dye, you're going to be disfigured. Come on now. Yeah. Anyway, Nico from Nambaka would have a field day. Yeah. No, this, I think he'd be weirded out, too. <laughs> this series, for me, is like my absolute... like. I can put up with Blood of Wars, I don't like it, and I don't really want to watch it anymore. But out of, like, if I was scoring series, this one's probably my least favorite. Like, this is my least favorite to actually sit down and watch. <laughs> and I'm sorry to anybody who, who really likes this series, it's really not my cup of tea. And I, like, like literally we watch it, and we're done filming for the day, because I cannot. Like straight up, every time we watched it, I'm like, I'm going to bed. <laughs> I'm gonna go beat my head against the wall and try to bring back some sanity before I have to go to work. So for me, this oh. series is a straight down. Like, yeah, sorry. And then right. me, yeah. on the complete opposite side of the spectrum. For me, it's a thumbs up. Oh, like all the way, thumbs up. The mm -hmm. animation is fantastic. I mean, I'm liking where the story's going. I can I can keep up with it. Uh, it really reminds me of Fully Cooley. You know, the, that mm -hmm. really that really weird sense of comedy and story that just yeah. You finish your sentence. It, it it just you don't know where it's going, and like for me in Blood of Wars. Not knowing where that one's going is annoying because that one should have a main story plot by this point. Mm. Right, yeah. This one does have a main story plot for uh, the most part. At the same time, like... When, 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 uh, they're, when they're not in... Uh, what's the world called? Uh, pure Illusion. When they're not in Pure Illusion, there's a story plot going on. Mm. But I may want to point out that I also did not really like Fully Cooley that much. And uh, what's another good example of something that gets a little surreal? Concrete Revolutio. Oh, Concrete Revolutio, I really, really did not enjoy. Um, actually, if you've ever read the books for Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, mm. in, the later, in the later books, it does start to get kind of hard to follow and a little surreal. So I stopped reading those books like partway through. Mm. It's just straight up not my kind of not my kind of thing. Uh, for me, this is one of those that I can just expect the unexpected. I, I should not try to figure out where it's going because mm. it's just you're there for the ride. It's an experience that you're just gonna have to deal with it. <laughs> You know, and uh, I guess for for me, that's just something that I'm okay with. Okay. Well, as for myself, um, the best way I can describe this series is if you take, say, screenwriter's scratch paper for Fully Cooley, any Miyazaki film, also get uh, traces of some other uh, surreal works, like, say, The Rolling Girls, or uh, anything like that, kind of put it in a blender with like maybe a magic room, and you get this. I'm kind of on the fence about it. I'm gonna have to give it a meh myself because the surrealism kind of seems a little forced with them trying to like 
portray a whole bunch of different scenes every episode. I don't know, maybe if they kind of tone down a wee bit on that, I'm, I'm not sure. It's just kind of like an X factor that's preventing this from being a great anime in my eyes. But I do kind of like the art style and uh, and the animation, uh, especially the action, and uh, do kind of like the cast of characters involved and the overreaching plot. Uh, subtle as it, or uh, yeah, not as uh, fully present as it is. So uh, it's kind of middle of the road for me. So yeah, in case you were wondering. <laughs> Completely 50 fucking 50. So, what do you guys think? Comments. <laughs> That's why you're here. Uh, I'm a slice of life guy. Oh, speaking of which. I think... Speaking of which. <laughs> well, I, I, before you, before uh, you go uh, there, uh, I also want to add Fully Cooly did it better. Oh, yeah, yeah. Much better. Yeah. It also did it shorter. I, I can, I can much definitely... Much shorter. <laughs> I can definitely see where Flip Flappers got its um, inspiration from Fully Cooly. Definitely. But it's just not the same. Excel Saga. I loved the beginning of Excel Saga, but after like episode 10 or so, it just went... You got to episode 10? Yup. And you don't like this anime? And I don't like this anime. I think that run burned his brain out on it, on the genre. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of like me and Bobo, 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 Bo. Yeah, like I like Excel Saga, but I've never made it to the end of that of that anime. Maybe that's what's it. Because like a series, oh, actually, no, I'll have to wait till we get to it to mention that. All right, anyway, yeah. continuing so, on then. You and me are going to have to have a very long discussion because I couldn't make it through episode four. I made it. I might not have made it to episode 10. <laughs> Again, your brain's fried. You probably don't remember it all. No, I really don't. The will solve anyway, your brain. So, uh, moving along, now that you've ruined my perfect segue. Yep. Um, so, the next one that we had was a uh, girlish number. Girlish number. Girlish number. It's so, like uh, girlish number runner. with an A in there because I'm not sure why. Like a I have to assume thing. that that's going to be the name of the the unit that they form. Ah. Anyway, that's that's what I assume. Well, we'll give it a hearty title um, drop. This when they series, do. every time that I mention it, I also mention that it's written written by Wataru Wataru. But the thing is, you don't have to when you listen to all the snark and the dialogue. You know damn well who's serious this the, yeah, is. The, the, the like this is one that we didn't plan on doing a reaction for and like me and dk watched the first episode of it and we just went we have to show this to zero and zero's and gonna love he, this basically it's either he's gonna really like this or really hate it if he really likes it awesome then we can watch our gyro at some point <laughs> <laughs> because that's one that i haven't shown to zero because i'm like well Maybe. it's either you'd be uh. into it or you'd be bored to tears like, there would be no in-between for him because he's an action guy. Oh, ulterior motives. Anyway, this series is excellent. Um, uh, Wataru Wataru is definitely back to form after um, what happened with Quilidia Code last season where he mm. didn't so much get to shine with his writing. That was a case of too many chefs. Yeah. But, yeah... I absolutely love the the characters so far in this series. Oh yeah, uh, especially Chitose. Because, oh my god, especially. Chitose. Like just in the first episodes, how many times have you been at work or at school or whatever, and you're just thinking in the back of your mind, like, "Wow, these fucking bitches," or <laughs> yeah. "These fucking dicks." Yeah, these this fucking dicks. Or, or wow, just please shut up. Yeah, I can't say that out loud. I, I, I really keep... want to, but I can't say it out loud. I, I like having a job every day. Yes, boss. But every day. <laughs> hey. But yeah, that, I mean, that's pretty much what it is. Like, she is so real. Mm. And so is the rest of the cast. Yeah. Like, er everybody is real. Her, her brother is just like, 
You're he's fucking al- lazy. <laughs> always tired of her shit. Yeah, but, always. I mean, basically, like he's that he's that kind of loving brother where he wants to help her out, but at the same time, he's like, "Wow, if I wasn't here, you'd be so fucked." <laughs> like you know. Yeah, he's always so exasperated because of it. And then on the other side, you have the the over exaggeration of the um, the executive. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, the producers. Yeah. Oh man. They are straight out of Mel Brooks as the producers. Kind of big, hearty laughing, you know, scheming, conniving sons of bitches. Like really. Yeah, and and I, I mentioned it I think during both episodes that we've done so far. You really, really like if you watch Ori Gaira season two and you see this, you really get the understanding that uh, Watari Watari really likes to make fun of this type of character, like this type of person. They're, they're kind of loud, not really listening to anybody, an idiot. By the same time, in a place of power. Yeah, but at the same time, in a place of power. Like a boss. I wonder why that is. Mm-hmm. Only a light awful novel author has to deal with people like that on a daily basis. Oh, also, he really likes to make fun of light novel authors. Oh my god. I'm pretty sure. I think he might have placed himself in that one scene with the light novel author trying to I don't to know if on. it's necessarily placing himself, but well, at least he making is poking fun. fun at himself yeah. because he does it in Aragairi too with, with Zymokuza. That's what, that's what I'm getting at. Uh, kind of uh, poking fun at himself uh, or by proxy. Yeah. But, verdicts. If there's Absolutely one great. thing that you're that you're gonna like, if there's one way to get me to love a series, it is it is. I and I'm being straight up honest. It is to it is to have really good characters that are really well written with really good dialogue. I mean, even if we we're uh, even if uh, Chitose got the lion's share of the good dialogue and the focus, I'd still enjoy this. But the fact. You know that the love goes around, and that you can just you can just sense Watari Watari's dialogue in everyone. He's like oh, I've mentioned this before. He's like the Joss Whedon of anime and light novels. Yeah, pretty much snarky, it, it, real dialogue. Yeah, and, and, and those really believable characters that you just can't help but fall in love with. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And because of that, we've fallen in love with this anime. <laughs> even, even after two episodes, we've only watched two episodes of it. I, because I, that's all that's come out so far that we could get our hands on. I, yeah. I could have told you. I could have told you damn, you know, damn straight after just one. Yeah. Just so, because there, yeah. there was so much. It, it's real. Yep. That, that's that's just about it. Really relatable. <laughs> <sighs> oh boy! Oh now, boy! The I elephant mean, in the room. Th- there's only one that could be so great. I mean. There's only one anime that I've ever seen with eight exclamation points. <sighs> We've reached perfection. It's Kid Ow! Ow. My work is done here. <laughs> right, on, right on the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, uh, Keijo is Keijo. dumb. <laughs> <laughs> Only the most in-depth analysis. I'm, I'm not gonna lie. It's it's one of those just straight fan service anime that is dumb. The premise is dumb. There the characters is oftentimes no are pretty fucking dumb. dumb. There is not there's, much of a story, really. Yeah, there's so many technical things that are you know, technically wrong at it if you look too closely. Let's see here. Yeah, here's the plot. Girl wants to get bit, uh, good at shaking boobs and ask for money. Yeah, well, pretty much. I mean, in yeah. public, no less. Ends up finding out On a that stage. ends up finding out that she's really, really good at it. But at the same time, it's gonna fuck her life up. Man. So what does she do? Oh, I'm gonna train harder. <laughs> yep. All your dreams, kids. That's pretty much it. I mean, just <laughs> I'm gonna be honest here. This is a very low brow series. But I knew that going in because I read the I read a few chapters of the manga. You could probably uh, establish that by translating the title Hip Whip Girl. 
But I mean, you look at the synopsis and yeah, just, you just know it's yeah. like, wow, that series is fan service bait. Now, what I want to mention mm -hmm. is there is a difference between the fan service that we've gotten in Keijo mm -hmm. and the fan service that we've gotten in Ange Verge. Ange Verge has mm -hmm. gone down in Otaku Saga history as the worst fan service we have ever seen. It's gone down in Otaku Saga history as the first anime which we couldn't finish a single episode. It was that. No, actually, we, we finished, uh, Ange Verge, we finished two. Yeah, we finished two. Oh. The one that we couldn't we watch a, a single one was Hats uh, Hatsukoi, Hatsukoi Monster. Monster. Oh, right. Oh, that was for a completely different reason. See, the fan we service in this, while not tasteful, is not that trashy. Ange Verge, it's just... Okay, Ange Verge, okay, they're having... First of all, like, if you took out the fan service, the episode was completely boring. You take out the fan service in the first episode of Ange Verge, you take out two-thirds of the whole episode. It would last... No, no, I mean, if you if you put that conversation in a normal setting other than a bath, hmm. and, and you, had, you had that for the episode of Ange Verge, it's boring. Like, it's straight up. There's nothing there. There's no substance. For this, at least you also get a pretty decent uh, sports story. You get a pretty decent uh, sports comedy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Comedy. This reminds me a fair bit of a very, very uh, niche series called Battle Athletes. I absolutely adore it. Or uh, I guess to be more specific, Battle Athletes Victory, because that was the more comedic series of the two. Um, bunch of girls in swimsuits running around and... Uh, yeah, just uh, kind of following their shenanigans. Yeah, and then also here, most of the fan service you're getting is of the girls in the swimsuits. Like, there's there's one scene, I think, where they're nude, and that, that's because um, Nozomi's ass is amazing. And it ripped off all the other girls' swimsuits. <laughs> Don't pay for a lap dance from her. <laughs> Death by, by Snoo Snoo! Snoo. Oh, thank God in heaven. <laughs> <laughs> but that is why we love this series. Um, it is so low it, brow. It, it's... You, you just have to deal with the comedy. I mean, that that's all it is. The it's comedy a, is pretty good. It's a, com it's a comedy sports anime. It's a piss take on sumo wrestling, of all things. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. It's only with the training suit. <laughs> yeah. And at the same time, like, it's a decent enough story. They give plenty enough per episode for there to be substance to it for us to actually, like, munch on, you know. Yeah, I mean, it, I mean, the story itself uh, kind of follows the, like, 90s preteen sports movie cliche. Kind of like your Mighty Ducks or something like that. You know, you got this kind of ragtag group, and then you got a more elite group they got to go up against, and you kind of you kind of go from there, hijinks ensue, and then you actually play. Uh, I mean, you, you basically, in this, it's it's a basic sports anime. Yeah. yeah. Like, I mean, you you can pretty much compare it to any of them. I'm, uh, I'm waiting for uh, Alba to get wharfed <laughs> at one point in time. Aww. Well, yeah. She, she is the one that's more... Um, hmm analytical awesome by analysis Ra yeah rather than rather than having the extreme physical abilities like nozomi or miata have i think miata might be the candidate for warfing oh yeah for sure she's gonna get warped yeah she's gonna get warped character. right before nozomi has to go up against the person that she just lost to yeah you know that that's gonna happen <laughs> that's gonna be it's probably gonna be um dang it rin 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 uh, I don't know if it's going to be Rin. Actually, I think that I, I would put my money on Miata actually beating Rin. Oh. Um, just because they set him up as being rivals. Okay. Yep. So. Oh, we'll see where uh, it goes. The, the um, Hanabi. All right, Hanabi. The one, that, yeah. the one that she faced in the very beginning. In the exam. <laughs> just be like, totally, totally right. just kicked her ass. Okay. Knocked her ass out with her ass. That's a killer ass. Booty had me like, whoa. <laughs> and 10 feet over there. There is one bit that I have to talk about before I give my verdict on this one, mm -hmm. which is the fact that they did skip about the first 20 chapters. Oh, yeah, I you actually read the manga, said. right? I, I read part of the manga. It starts with Nozomi like as a senior in high school. Mm. 
and basically she um, she is the oldest daughter in a family where their parents do not live with them so they're very poor and basically she's taking care of I think her three younger siblings it's either two or three oh yeah that's right they're and, all college age huh in this, yeah, in this the this is basically this academy they're going to is a college oh man they could bring it to America back in the 90s but so it starts out there and you get an actual introduction to K. Joe uh, and then I just thought that it was a much better starting point than where they actually started. Okay. But according to somebody who actually reads the manga, and I'm sorry, I don't remember what, who the commenter was, not off the top of my head anyway, but they want to get to a certain point with the anime, mm -hmm. and if they started at the start, then they wouldn't get to that point. It would just take too long. They'd probably get halfway through the, the, um, the academy arc that they're on. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Well, they might get further than that. I, I really don't know how they're exactly how they're adapting it because I haven't read the manga because I don't really like giving myself spoilers mm -hmm. if I can help it. You know what I said? If I can help it because I tend to give myself lots of spoilers by accident. Damn anyway, it, do. His I'm giving this like I'm giving it honestly like just thinking about it just from in the depths of my heart. Mm -hmm. I'm giving this like a seventy-five percent. Okay. Like, like yeah, it's it's right in that area. It is very enjoyable to watch. Um, it's funny. It's it's just that that one that one little thing always ticks in the back of my mind. Like you know, they could have started this at a much better point. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. I don't I don't know about I don't know about you, but I think you're you're the only one on that because the enjoyment that I'm getting getting from it is just astronomical. I mean, I as astronomical to top you could say indeed <laughs> we'll keep grabbing at him till we get a laugh damn it <laughs> <laughs> anyway so you're gonna give it a full thumbs up i'm giving it a full thumbs up i mean what what else is there there to really say don't take this series seriously it's not that type of anime yeah, um, I'm going to have to give it a thumbs up myself based on sheer enjoyment factor. I can just sit down, especially after watching some of the more serious series we're taking on this season. Just sit down, tune out, and turn up the boob tube. It's definitely not trying to masquerade as a masterpiece. Nope. That's actually the thing, yeah. It's not trying to hide that, itself or anything. Yeah, that's, it's, that's kind of the thing, you know, yeah. where, where I start drawing the line between me being irritated by bad fan service and me being entertained by some is that it's not trying to masquerade as a masterpiece oh no this isn't an anime for people who enjoy fan service yep i mean straight up and the fan service is is good fan service i mean uh, because it doesn't try to hide itself as anything else i mean in the first couple episodes going back to and first couple episodes <laughs> 80 percent of it was a bath scene 80% of it. An unnecessary but, bath scene. Unnecessary and repetitive conversations and in I'm, a bath scene. I'm not just saying, like, just in the first episode. I mean, like, 80% of the two episodes that we watched. Yeah. That's that's almost a full hour's worth. And, 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 and the majority of it was... Well, and then, like, the majority of the first episode of that one was the same conversation happening. Yeah. Between the different characters of the different, I guess, worlds that they came from or whatever. This one, mm -hmm. you get a laugh at them trying to bounce a bounce a, uh, a beach, beach ball, ball with their asses. asses. Or you you get to you get to have a laugh of, of them attempting to roll a tire around with their butts and at butts and tits. Or Nozomi in the training suit. Or Nozomi in the training suit. Or them doing butt walks. Or them doing butt figure eights. Or them just and then you have the <laughs> vacuum butt cannon. That's just not just the scene where Nozomi <laughs> the tries. The butt. Yeah, no, no. Just the scene where Nozomi tries to plead with Ujibe Sensei to have her teach her the vacuum butt cannon. Yeah, you get like very serious voice acting. Please teach me the vacuum butt cannon. 
Can you imagine? I said we, we mentioned this during uh, the discussion for that episode, but just imagine what the studio was like on that day when they laid that track down. <laughs> Everyone had to like bite their tongues, I'm sure, to keep oh. themselves from laughing. That or they spent like five hours on just like B-roll takes because what, they laughed like, too hard. And Verge, and Verge tried tried to show off show off tits and ass while masquerading as more of a you know more of a sort of like high school, school or combat like kind of anime yeah you know, this this has no it, it just all out there well and then Let's the other thing out, with the verge is you got the you got the strange um strange censorship mm. Whereas in this one, the only way that they censored their nude bodies was by covering up with their arms, which is normal. So you could, like, I could totally see them making a Blu-ray of this where they would slightly move their arm or whatever so you can see tits. Yeah, miss some topless but shots. But to be honest, I, I don't necessarily think that they have to do that. Whereas Ange Verge, you know that the only reason why they had that was so that they could take away some of the censorship and to sell Blu-rays. Blu -rays. Yep. Yeah, that's the difference. Let's move along before we beat this into beat the this ground. Ass. Yeah. yeah, before we beat that ass. Mm. Anyway, uh, uh, yeah, the next one is one that I know that we're all enjoying. Uh, Maho Shoujo Ikusei Keikaku. And drawing for much different reasons. Yes. Um, just going to start off, we've had some copyright issues over this one. We had the second episode gets copyright struck by Molebeat. Again, those fucking slimy bastards. <laughs> um, so we're, we're going to have to figure out something. We That's why we haven't posted episode three and four yet, though we have watched them. But let's go ahead and get and get into it. Um, we're, out, we're probably going to have to come up with a name, a name for it that we post when we post episodes. Kind of like what we did for yeah, real life. Quotes. So mm -hmm. we'll, we'll come up with something, I'm sure. Anyway, Fav is a homicidal dickhead. Um, fuck Fav. Fuck Fav. Oh wait, we can't. We can't. We, we, can't, we can't use that one. Can't put fucking titles. Uh, we also can't use killer. Oh uh, yeah. Um, oh. Yeah, we can't can't use homicide. Shit, can't man. use heart attack. Hmm. If you guys have an idea, leave a comment down below. Oh god, that's dangerous. That right? is dangerous. Right? But we want to know. We just well, want to, at the very least, we want actually, to know. Actually, yeah, no, just do it. Because we'll pick the best one. Because, yeah, we're awesome like that. I guess. Um, we'll as far as this ideas. series goes, like... I feel that we almost ruined it for ourselves in the beginning because mm -hmm. we understood that it was going to be a Dark Magical Girl series. Like right from the get go. So well, at least in my case, I immediately compared it to Madoka Magica. Yeah. Actually, well, we just got we just wrapped up uh, reactions for Madoka Magica last season. Yeah. So yeah, there, us, there, so. there was that comparison, especially since people were like, "Oh, you should watch this one because it's it's dark like Madoka Magica." We actually the reason why we were watching this is because one of our Twitch streams. Yeah, you know, there was there was a few people who were like, "You should totally watch this. It's it's like Madoka Magica." It's just I always gotta love it that we take on the darker like Magic Girl series because of the fans, right? I mean, I enjoy them. I'm enjoying it. Yeah, this is this is totally enjoyable. I was just remarking that it's never of our own volition. <laughs> <laughs> um, we were totally gonna yeah. pass this by. If no, it like yeah, straight up. Yep. Hmm. But so far, I'm really really liking it. Um, for me, they I I felt that they did a really good job with um, Nemarine's death mm. because they didn't make it gruesome. They didn't make it like they didn't make it over the top. And because they didn't show her corpse, like they just showed her hand laying over the side of the bed. And you get just the audio of her mother walking in and like talking like normal and then like sensing something's wrong and then realizing that something's really, really wrong and just the anguish in her voice. Excellent voice acting by oh, whoever man. did the mother. Oh too. man. 
That was one of the most it crushing was, scenes. It was really, season. really powerful. It's maybe one of my favorite death scenes, uh, just because they made it so real. And also, um, I forgot the YouTube user's uh, name off the top of my head, uh, but it was suggested that everyone who dies is going to get a poetic death as a fan theory. And so far, I think that's been confirmed. Nemarine dies in her sleep. Ruler gets killed off, we assume, by her underlings. Who's next? Yeah. Love that uh, element of suspense. Who's going to get it next and how? Oh, yeah. So what, would Calamity Mary die by uh, getting drunk and shooting herself? Maybe. Or dying of alcohol poisoning in general. <laughs> the way that she was swigging that Liver not Jack Daniels. Liver sclerosis. <laughs> right. <laughs> you never know. I'm sorry. I, I had to go there. In an anime like this, you really never know. And, and I think if if that is the case, just because of how the Peaky Angels are, where they're they're very vin almost vindictive, mm. and you know stabbing the stabbing people in the back, mm. if they die or when they die, probably, I hope that they stab each other in the back. They kill each other off. That would be poetic. That would. Oh man. But and and here's here's another thing, right? Mm. The the fantastic thing that I like about this tournament, right? Mm -hmm. Obviously, it's a tournament of death. Right. But there are eight spots to be filled. Mm -hmm. Eight. Yeah, I, I like how it's not like, uh, you know, last one standing type yeah. thing. It, as much as I like saying Battle Royale when I talk about this series, it's not a Battle Royale. Yeah, yeah I mean, doing it like this doesn't make it as much of a Battle Royale ripoff. Even though you really want to draw that comparison off the bat. But it, you, you just can't, just from this simple like format change, as it were. So it's like when I when I first walked into this anime, um, you know, I'm thinking, well, of course our main character is gonna gonna go, gonna gonna stay. Uh, of course, her best friend is gonna have to stay. Uh, ruler, sw uh, swim, swim, and that that th those two, yeah, they 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 yeah. they'll probably stay. They have a good chance. Obviously, I'm wrong. <laughs> All my assumptions are wrong. And that that's what's fantastic. Like, I have my list. I, I have it start out of who I think is going to survive. Oh, yeah. that's what, uh, Speaking of which, uh, we need y'all to write down who you think is going to survive and or uh, an order of people getting uh, whacked. Mm. <laughs> right. I think it's time for a verdict. It's your favorite yeah, We will definitely be posting more of these. We're just, we just gonna have to figure out the copyright issues. Yeah, We're but they are coming. Move around copyrights. More magical girl death is coming. So unfortunately, it looks like we've run ourselves out of time for this oh particular podcast. We've talked for an hour, and we're only halfway through our anime. <laughs> There's a lot to talk about with these titles, though. So yeah, it's so be we're gonna go ahead and split this into two parts. We'll be back with the the second part next week for our podcast. Look forward to it, indeed. And uh, you please, please let us know. We, we've asked you questions through podcast, and we really want to know. And what, what, what's your take on all this? Yep. So that's going to do it for this edition of Otaka Saga Talks. As always, I'm Rizzo. I'm Zero. And I'm DK. See, See you, you next time. time. Uh, so yeah, if you'd like to check out episodes of Anime Reaction, go ahead and hit this link. If you feel like something different, not anime related, check out OS Gaming, featuring Rizzo's playthrough of Tales of Hysteria and other content coming soon. Yeah, and if you follow this link, he'll take you to our new and improved Patreon. Yep. 